I recently received a friend request that reminded me of this story, so I'm going to share it here. This happened after I went to university, so I was 18. I made an effort to make friends after I moved on to campus, and ended up with a few groups to hang out with, including a new girlfriend, and plenty of people from my classes that I liked well enough. There was one class before lunch where it was traditional for people to go to the cafeteria afterwards to eat in pairs or threes. I wasn't very discerning about who I'd have lunch with, because I got on fine with most people from the class, and we were all trying to make an effort to be social. So when one girl, Lily, asked if I wanted to eat lunch together after class, I didn't have a reason not to go. We talked about school and that kind of thing, nothing noteworthy but she asked me to get lunch with her again the next week. It became a pattern, and there wasn't exactly a way to start saying no suddenly. It was fine, but it did mean I lost a chance to eat lunch with anyone else on those days. In hindsight, I suppose that was the point. One day in class, I asked someone if I could add them on social media. This happened in front of Lily. I saw her face jerk towards me from a couple of seats over. It was such a sharp reaction that it was hard to ignore, and I still remember it. By the time I got home later that day, Lily had sent me a friend request. No friends in common. Don't know how she knew my last name. I was a bit surprised, but I guess she just dug through the university social media pages and found me through there. It gave me a bad feeling, but surely it was fine. She ended up messaging me a lot, and commenting on anything I posted. I told myself that she was just awkward, and we became friends, if not close. I had known worse people. She still always got me to go to lunch with her after one of our shared classes. After than that, we rarely spent time together in person. I saw her around sometimes, but I never went out my way to hang out with her. So it was mostly online messaging and seeing each other in group sends. Coincidentally, my girlfriend was also called Lily. This was something that clearly bothered Lily, not my girlfriend who couldn't have found it less interesting, but it's a common name. She occasionally hinted that she wanted my girlfriend to pick a different name, or joked that it didn't sue her. She clearly didn't like my girlfriend at all, and I had no idea of why. It was hard to ignore by this point. Lily was starting to unsubtly hint that she had a crush on me. I tried not to address it, because what was I going to say? I'd never known what to do when a friend makes a pass at me. I was also not interested in the least. Even ignoring weird stuff she pulled, Lily wasn't my type at all. She tended to dress and act in a way somewhere between 50s housewife and one of those adults who's still obsessed with a Disney princess. If you can picture that. Things took an uncomfortable turn one day, on our last shared class of the year. Instead of asking me to lunch like she usually did, Lily asked if I'd go for a walk with her. Again, I didn't know exactly how to refuse, so I said alright. Our campus was bordered by a large patch of woodland. Lily led me into the woods, and the sounds of our fellow students slowly faded away. She sat down on a log and I joined her. She started talking about how she was going to miss me over the summer. I tried placating her, but I didn't want to be there, especially because she seemed almost on the verge of tears. I think I tried to make an excuse about having plans with my girlfriend, but before I could leave, Lily chose to kiss me without warning. It was uncomfortable to say the least. I got out of there and was happy to think that I wouldn't see her for a while. I came back to university after the summer, moving into a house with my friends. Without going off topic, there were some serious issues in my friend group. A lot of petty arguing and worse. I broke up with my girlfriend around the start of school year as well and basically the whole mess made me recontextualize things with Lily, because suddenly it didn't seem as bad. That said, I didn't want to be alone with her. We mostly talked online, she was still constantly messaging me after all. One upside of everything is that I started dating a boy. Lily was not pleased to hear that news. I think she hoped to sneak in after I broke up with my girlfriend, but as I said before, that was never going to happen. There wasn't a big gap between my breakup and this new relationship, so she must have thought she missed her chance to be with me. And this is where the story gets bad. At this time, I was fairly active on Tumblr. 
I occasionally talked about my life, and mostly replogged photos and stuff. I was on there one day when something odd happened. One of the blogs I followed had received an ask with some phrases I recognised. It took a second to register that it was taken from my about page. That made me freeze. I read the message properly. Someone was asking this completely random person to analyse a section of a page from my page, asking for their opinion on the type of person who could write it. I cannot stress how messed up this is to see people talking about me like I was a character in a book they were trying to study. The reply was basically, I don't know, sorry, but the important thing was the question hadn't been anonymous, it was linked to someone's blog. Obviously, I wanted to know who had taken such a bizarre interest in me. As far as I knew, no one in real life, other than my boyfriend, knew about my page. Well, no prizes for guessing who was behind it. What I found was a shrine. She was using a fake name, but I recognised Lily all over that thing. It was this cutesy pink and red page. There were a few posts about her interests, but most of her content was focused on her primary interest, me. Most of the posts were about me. There were accounts of things I'd done recently. He told me about such and such. He went to a nightclub recently, etc. As well as references to things as far back as I'd known her. It was clear that she'd been keeping tabs on me, both online and offline, gathering up every scrap of information she could have about my life and holding it here in her collection. She talked about us eating lunch together and how special our dates had been to her, as if it was anything more than acquaintances getting food after class. She talked about the time she had forcibly kissed me in the woods, but she wrote it as if it had been mutual. She quoted lyrics from my favourite song and talked about how she would always be there for me, no matter who else came into my life. Lots of references to loving me just the way he is, which answered another mystery about an anonymous love letter I'd received earlier in the year with the same word in. It got worse. There were a lot of posts about my boyfriend as well. These weren't so nice. They got vicious, talking about how he didn't deserve me, he didn't know what he had. If she was with me, she'd be jealous of anyone who came near me, so my boyfriend not being a jealous person meant he didn't love me. It was angry and hateful. I didn't like to think about the sort of person who could write so obsessively being fixated on me. One thing that didn't make sense at first is that the blog also made plenty of references to Lily's best friend Stephen. She'd never even mentioned this person to me. Her post talked a lot about Stephen and how great friends he was, and how much fun they'd had together, how he looked out for her, etc. I was trying to work out whether this was an online friend, when one specific post made it all click. She had posted a photo and captioned it with, Stephen sent this to me, he knew I'd like it and I love it, or something like that. The problem was, the photo was taken from my own page, I hadn't sent it to her. She took it from my page and then claimed this fictional best friend of hers shared it with her because in her head, she would split me into two people. In her messed up fantasy life, I was both the perfect best friend who was also looking out for her and her soulmate who was bound to end up with her when I finally got over my sweet and kind boyfriend and all the other easy girls I hung out with that she made dozens of posts complaining about. Who was she complaining to? Oh, Lily had an audience. She asked open questions about me and her relationship with me and got messages back from her followers, people who took what she said at face value. I saw a bunch of random people agreeing with this stalker that my boyfriend didn't deserve me and we were bound to break up soon so I could be with Lily, the person I was clearly supposed to be with. She had this fake fanfiction version of my life for anyone to share their opinion on and she'd made herself out to be a hero in it all. I went maybe a month back into this page's history. I did not look at everything that was there, it was too much. So I'm not sure how long this has been going on. I sent Lily a message confronting her about the blog. She said nothing. I cannot stress how weird it is to have found pages dedicated to me. With her talking about how she was in love for me and make sure we'd end up together, slamming my boyfriend and building a fantasy life with two different versions of me in that she clearly believed to be real then acting like it hadn't happened. She said nothing. She didn't address it, she changed the subject. Even after I pushed, and it was like she hadn't even registered what I said, I'd never seen anything else like it. She deleted the page of course, or at least changed the name and hid it so I never found it again. It wasn't the end though. I wasn't going to hang out with her anymore, 
but we were still shoved together in classes and she started to actually scare me with what she might do. I'm kind of a paranoid person. Knowing someone was obsessively keeping track of me for who knows how long freaked me out. The next thing she pulled was trying to seduce my boyfriend. It was an absolutely useless attempt that only made him uncomfortable. He told me about it right away. What was her plan there? Did she hope to tell me he cheated and wait for me to break up with him? Why would I want her after that? When that didn't work for her, she tried hitting on three of my other friends. None of them took the bait. She ended up dating one of my former housemates for a while, but made sure to send me messages while they were together, letting me know that she'd rather be with me. No thanks. Lily made sure to stay in my life the whole time I was at university. There was a time where I tried to pull away from her, and she ended up starting rumours about me and damaging my career opportunity I had put a lot of work into. I don't know what else she did behind my back, but it made me realise I was safer to let her think she was a part of my life while ignoring her, rather than doing something that would cause her to get angry. I graduated, Lily wanted to spend some time together, but I knew I didn't have to now. I made excuses about work and barely talked to her after this point. I almost entirely stopped posting on social media that I knew she knew about. Of course, she didn't give up that easily. She tried to start conversations, asked me to meet up with her, attempts I usually ignored. I didn't like to think that she was still tracking me online, but she probably was. I don't know how, but she had occasionally referenced things I mentioned online somewhere, somewhere she shouldn't have known about. The last time we had a real conversation, she sent me a message out of nowhere. We hadn't spoken at all in months, and we hadn't talked about anything serious in much longer than that. Thinking about that conversation still makes my skin crawl, but I'll summarise what happened. At first she asked me some questions about how long I'd known that I was queer. I told her some basic stuff, the kind of thing I'd tell anyone who asked. And then she changed the subject. She started talking about how I'd feel about her if she was a boy, about wanting to be a boy for me. The messages quickly became fetishistic. She went into plenty of detail about fantasies she had of the two of us. Again, we were not friends at this point. We'd never even been especially close, at least not from my perspective, and we'd barely spoken for years. I can't imagine sending messages like that to a close friend, let alone someone who barely knows you. I tried telling her not to pull this crap with me, but she decided to change her tactics. She sent me photos of herself, followed by a bunch of messages, maybe four or five a minute. Way too fast for me to reply before the next one arrived. Basically quoting back to what I told her about myself in the past. She was telling me these things as if they happened to her. She was role playing as me. The worst part is that she seemed to believe it was real. That those things actually happened to her. Even when she was quoting me word for word. Things I told her only hours before were now her life. It was as if she was trying to absorb my history to take it over. To make my life part of her. Yeah, I didn't talk to her again after that. I ignored all future attempts she made to talk to me and I eventually silently deleted her from the inactive social media, which was her only real way of contacting me. I really thought she might finally move on. A few days ago, she sent me a friend request. It is sitting here unanswered, because I know if I delete it, she'll only send another one. Lily and I met nearly 12 years ago. This story is just the highlights, and even then, it's only the stuff I know about for sure. A lot happened behind my back. I know it did. So to the girl who spent 12 years obsessing over me, fetishizing me, stalking me, and harassing me, let's not meet again. The fantasy life you built for the two of us in your head is the only place you'll be seeing me anytime soon. A few years ago, my husband was working swing shifts. At the time, we only had one car, so I'd drive him in and then pick him up, which was irritating because I had to wake up, almost fully, and drive him 30 minutes in, drive 30 minutes home, and then I could go back to sleep for an hour or so before I had to get ready for work. One day after I dropped him off in the wee morning hours, I stopped at a gas station not too far from his work to get a pack of cigarettes. When I came out of the store, there was a large white van parked beside my car. There had been a few warnings on Facebook about a white van in the area that was up to no good, so I took notice of it. 
because there weren't a lot of people around, I found it strange that they parked directly beside my car, seeing as how there were many empty spaces around the lot. I headed to my car, already aware of the van, and two guys had popped out of it. They weren't very young or old, just average looking and a little dirty. I don't judge though, as they could have been working, so I continued walking towards my car. One of the guys yelled out to the other guy that he dropped his birth certificate, but the second guy had a very confused look on his face. I didn't see anything come out when the passenger opened the door, so I knew he didn't drop anything, but I was thinking to myself, why would you have that with you? So, as I got between my car and the van, the driver fast walked around the front of the van and came up behind me, with the passenger in front of me, effectively blocking me between the vehicles. The passenger then asked me to look for his birth certificate, and I declined. He said, come on, help a guy out. I looked at him, keeping the driver in my sight and keeping my back to my car, and said no very firmly. But this time, I was standing right in front of my door handle, so I reached behind me, grasped the door handle and pulled. As I started to sit backwards into my car, the passenger reached for my arm, and I managed to pull my car door shut and lock the door before he could get my door open. I threw my car in reverse and got the hell out of Dodge. As soon as I was out of the parking lot, I called my husband freaking out. Unfortunately, I wasn't thinking clearly and didn't get the license plate of the van. I couldn't believe how utterly stupid the passenger's excuse for hanging around between the vehicles was, nor how freaking brazen they were, as the local sheriff's department and the jail were walking distance to the gas station. So, to the guys in the white van, less not me, I still have anxiety over this. In October of 2019, I went to a Halloween costume ball hosted at our local art gallery, which was organised by a Unitarian Universalist spiritual centre, whose members I have close ties with. It was a typical party, but had a few ceremonial attributes to celebrate Semaine. I dressed up as the Red Death from Phantom of the Opera, but basically went alone, thus waiting for a friend who it did eventually come to meet up with me later that night. Before that, I had the most bizarre experience. Bizarre as in, I was unable to imagine a clear explanation behind this certain circumstance. I still can't think of one to this day. So, after dancing to the music and sipping a couple of drinks, I was interested enough to purchase a photographic aura reading from this lady in a little booth. I sat down, and she instructed me to take off my skull mask and firmly lie my palms on a flat silver machine linked to her laptop. I was then instructed to look into a camera, and after a few minutes, my image appeared on the screen with a mix of transparent colours, along with various measuring charts. I was further intrigued, and listened to the lady's explanations concerning chakras and the like. As I was trying to pay attention to her, something in my peripheral vision distracted me a bit. I decided to look directly ahead, and to my surprise, a group of four sitting at a table were staring at me and smiling back three men and one woman. If their expressions weren't really friendly, then they were most definitely flirtatious. I can't recall if they ever blinked. I was a bit weirded out, especially since I wasn't wearing my skull mask. I didn't even think to wave back a hello. So I just ignored them and listened further to the lady's interesting lecture, helping me examine my aura. At the time, I couldn't help but feel being stared down from the distance. I looked ahead, and again, it was the same group checking me out. They just kept looking at me without even signalling to me to walk over to the table. I knew I wasn't hallucinating, because I blinked and the group was still there, not making a single move. To be honest, I swear I've never met this group before, so I really don't know why they were staring at me like they already knew me closely. While not making it a big deal, the lady finished up what she wanted to teach me. I paid her, and just got up to go to the restroom. I brushed off that strange experience as nothing. Afterward, my friend found me and we chatted until we had to leave for his mother's birthday outing. Interestingly enough, I then realised that the group never approached me after my aura session. I wonder what that was all about. Out of stubborn curiosity, I searched through the entire venue and didn't find them. Good thing I didn't end up telling a man that I had teeth in my rear end to scare him off. Well, that's pretty much it, and hopefully, you are never as spooked as I was. At 
Hello everyone, this is the part of the video where there's no more stories and we just have a chat, don't we? Um, the weird thing is, I've actually only narrated one story so far for this video. It's a really long one, so that's why I'm doing this now, because my head hurts a bit. But um, yeah, I'm just going to talk for a little bit, and then I'll probably narrate the rest of the stories for this video that you've already heard in a bit. But um, yeah, I've... <laughs> what's been going on in my life I've had my uni exams basically um, I had them last well, yesterday and the day before and I think they went alright actually I'm hoping that I just pass because I don't want to have to do any retakes to be honest like I'm sick to death of uni exams now and revising so hopefully I pass it I did anatomy and physiology so I just fingers crossed I passed them both I've also got an assignment to do which I've started today as well. I've got to finish another assignment. <laughs> and then in six weeks, I've got another two exams or three exams or something. So I've been quite busy recently. This is why the videos haven't been as consistent because it's just like, I just can't, just, I don't know. It's just once I've been on my screen for so long revising, it's like, I can't be bothered to record if that makes sense. Like I want to, but then it's like, I just need to get out of the house for a little bit. Do you know what I mean? Even just go for a walk or something. That's the main thing for me. Like, I need to get out of the house in the day. I can't be indoors all day. Like My brain just isn't good if I do that. Especially with the stuff I've been t uh, telling you guys about recently. With, like My anxiety and stuff. I can't stay indoors all day. Even now it's quarter past one in the afternoon. And I've not left the house yet. Which for me isn't good. I need to get out. So I'm going to try and go for a jog after I've recorded this bit. I think. And um, yeah. It made me feel a bit better to be honest. I'm actually going out tonight, um, nothing like massive, but I'm going to like a, there's like, because obviously the COVID restrictions have been lifted, haven't they? So, um, but like not fully, but um, there's like a, in, uh, I'm going to Maidstone tonight, which is quite away from where I live. It's um, where my friends live. They it's, it's about, I live in Essex, like the border of Essex and London. So it's going to be like a hour long drive for me. And um if there's like an outside bar thing that's open so like you have you book a table it's only like five pounds to book the table and uh they bring all the drinks to your table and everything and all that so that'd be quite nice but i'm not gonna really um drink alcohol or anything because obviously driving so i'm uh i'm just gonna get some like food and that because i've still got food and like you get like burgers and that sort of thing so that's what i'm gonna do that's what i'm planning on anyway that's the only problem when you drive somewhere in it you can't drink like you uh if i could get a taxi there i would but it cost an absolute fortune i think it cost me about 50 quid to get a taxi up there that's just a lot of money in it so i just i just can't be bothered to spend that much my girlfriend lives in gillingham so i'm gonna drive um past gillingham to get to maidstone which is a long way isn't it She's going to go from Gillen, obviously, to Maidstone, which is only about um, 20 minutes, 50, about 20 minutes. And, uh, yeah, so hopefully that'll be all right. It's the first thing I've done in about a year because of, obviously, lockdown. But, yeah, I'm looking forward to doing something, to be honest. What else have I been up, I've been up to? Um, hmm... I still do a lot of running actually. I'm gonna go for I said I'm gonna go for a run after this. I just I love going for runs. I don't know, something about exercising and going for runs just makes my head feel so much better. Like I've got really bad anxiety at the moment, which I'm trying to get fixed. I'm speaking to the therapist soon actually, hopefully in like a month or a few weeks they've just gotta call me. But once I get that sorted I think I'll feel a lot better. Like I've never really been the sort of person that I I didn't realise that I had a problem with it, like I said before. But now I know I do, so I'm just trying to get it done and sorted with and all this. Um, what else? Oh, the shopping centres have opened as well. So I went down there as well, which is... It's, it's nice just to get out and do simple things, you know what I mean? Like, even if I went on my own and it was just nice just to walk around and, I don't know, just... Like, I haven't got loads of money, like I said, but, like, just to spend, like... I bought a hoodie that I wanted... I've wanted for ages I just couldn't bother to buy it online so I'm wearing that now actually it's, um, yeah 
Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, sometimes it's nice just to get something, like, just go out and get something that you want. Because I don't spend money, really. Like, because I've never really had lots of money, I don't spend a lot of money, if you know what I mean. So whenever I save a little bit of money, it's like, I don't want to spend it. I don't know if you guys get that as well, because... I feel like if I was always rich my whole life, I'd be happy to go and spend money. But I feel guilty if I spend like if I spend like five pounds on something, I feel guilty spending that money. Do you know what I mean? Like if I went and bought a shirt for fifteen pounds, twenty pounds, I'd be like, oh, why have I done that? Like I'd feel guilty about it for the rest of the day. I don't know if you guys get this as well. Like I don't know. It's, I think it's just where I've not. I've never been rich or had loads of money or loads of money spare so like when I do save a bit it's like just don't spend it just keep it like leave it there but at the same time you can't live your whole life never enjoying anything can you this is what I'm trying to find a balance with at the moment because it's like say if I do save up a little bit of money like not even much if I save a little bit why can't I spend it on something that I want like treat myself to something like you should be able to treat yourself to something shouldn't you I'm not saying like go out and spunk it all up the wall on something like stupid but like you can get little things for yourself can't you like that shouldn't be an issue oh, and this is a bit annoying as well they've put temporary lights literally outside my house like directly outside my house where I live so <laughs> like I can't park in my normal parking spot because I'm going to get hit by a bus. Like, the weird thing is, where I live is Essex, but it still comes under London. So I get the London buses, you know, like the red ones, but they're fucking massive. So they they literally, they try and squeeze through, literally, like, the eye of a fucking needle to get past the cars. And they keep, like, the scratch cars and stuff and, like, hit your wing mirror and stuff. So I don't want them to keep... I don't want to hit my wing mirror or anything or knock it off because it just, I don't know, it's like a, like a fucking GTA, some of these bus drivers, I just slam into everything. So I'm going to, well, I have, I've put my car up on the drive, which is annoying because whenever, like, my dad wants to move his car or his van or whatever, like, you know that game where <laughs> you've got all the cars in the, the big car park and you uh you need to try and move them to get one of them out or something it's a bit like that on my drive at the minute it's like it's so annoying if anyone wants to go out you've all got to get out and everything and try and reverse it. but when i reverse out i'm reversed into all the cars at the temporary lights and everything it's so annoying and obviously sometimes they change when i'm reversing people are trying to get around me and i'm trying to get around them it's really annoying like it's really really irritating like hopefully it doesn't go on for like too long but I don't know. I don't know. What else has been going on in my life? I've got a tea, actually. One sec. I'll tell you what, I make a good tea. <clears throat> if there's one thing I can do really well, I do make a good tea. Like, I just... I don't know, like... You just got... You can't put the milk in first. Like, some people think you can put the milk in first, and you just can't. It just doesn't do it for me. This is for me, right? I'm telling you, this is how you make a good tea. If any Americans, whatever, are listening, you haven't got very nice tea bags in America. I know you've got like Lipton and that crap, but say you could get hold of some Yorkshire tea. Basically, <clears throat> you should. Uh, it depends on me if you want sugar or not, but I do. So I have one sugar now. So I one sugar straight in. First thing in the cup is one sugar, right? And I'm not having anyone tell me otherwise. Tea bag in. Still no water or anything in there. Boil the water. You pour it in. Right? After you've done that, stir it. Before you put the milk in. Then, you put the milk in. Stir it again. You don't put a shit load of water in. Just put like... Do you know how much milk you'd put in like an... Like um, an, a concentrate juice sort of thing. You wouldn't put that much, would you? So you do that with the milk as well. You don't pour it in. You want it to be like a golden colour. You don't want it to be like a cup of piss, like sea, like, like white. Do you know what I mean? So you put that in, stir it again, leave it for about a minute. Then you take the tea bag out, squeeze it on the side of the cup. And then you you can have it after you've done that. And that's how you make the ideal tea. I'm telling you, you'll love it. It's a it's a it bangs. It really does. It is so good. It is proper banging. But, yeah, now I've waffled on about nothing, 
what else is there to talk about? Oh yeah, there's that. Um, this is gonna probably. I, I want to get this out today, but I just don't feel like I'm gonna have the time. So there's um, Ben Askren versus Jake Paul uh, tomorrow. I think I'm recording this on a Friday, on the Friday night, on Friday night, Friday afternoon. <coughs> but um, I'm sorry, I keep coughing. I've not got COVID. Do you know when you <laughs> I've eaten, and do you know when you get it's like stuck in your throat a little bit. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so Jake Paul versus uh, Ben Askren. So I'm sitting here, I'm thinking, who's going to win? I do not want Jake Paul to win it. I don't like Jake Paul. Like, uh, the thing is, everyone goes on, oh yeah, Jake's a really good boxer. It's like, yeah, but you got to realise that he's, his people gas him up. He's got loads of yes men around him. Of course he has. Like, all these people hyping him up, saying how sick he is. It's like, I've only ever seen him do like, a good one too and that's about it like he looks like a decent amateur but he's nothing special do you know what I mean like you'd think he's like reincarnated Muhammad Ali the way people go on about him he's not all that and the thing is he's he's not even fought a boxer yet he's fighting Ben Askren right who fair enough is an athlete but just because he's an athlete doesn't mean he's like a boxer do you know what I mean even the MMA, he was only strike. He, his striking was only to get his opponent to the ground because he's a wrestler. It's all well and good, Jake Paul going, "Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fighting a real fighter now." It's like, yeah, but <laughs> it's like going, "Oh yeah," it's like it's like he did before. It's like, "Oh yeah, I'm fighting a real athlete, it's like a basketball player." It couldn't be further from fighting. You're not even allowed to fucking make contact in basketball, are you? I don't think so, anyway. So it doesn't make sense. It's like me going, "Oh yeah, I'm a." Uh, I'm fighting a a real um, a proper athlete. It's a darts player. It's, like, well, it's not the same, is it? It's really not. I think Ben Askren looks all right on the pads and that, but I don't know. I just want Ben Askren to win. I really want Ben Askren to win, but I just don't know if it'll happen. But yeah, what else is going on at the minute? Uh, I don't really know what goes on on YouTube to me. I don't really focus on it that much. Like, I upload these videos and I watch the odd thing, but like, all the things I watch is like football related or like, I like Pokemon stuff as well and um, boxing. Like, this is the sort of stuff I watch on YouTube. I don't watch any of like the trendy stuff. So I don't really know what's going on, to be honest with you. But yeah, um,. I don't know, like, I, I have a few people I talk to from YouTube, but I don't really, like, talk to anyone that much at all. I know there's other people that do these videos that talk to people, like, all the time, and it's like, that's just not me. Do you know what I mean? Like, I get on with people, but I'm quite a, um, well, I'm an introvert, really, and I just, I don't know, I just like talking to you lot. Do you know what I mean? Like, I prefer to have a conversation with you guys than some YouTuber. Just would, like... I don't know, I it just makes me cringe how people always think they're famous. Like, even people who are nice on YouTube, right, they post these things and say if they've got 100,000 subscribers or something, and it's like, yeah, but you're not famous. Why are you making out, it? it's, it's really annoying that like, they're making out like their fucking life's a movie and stuff. It's like, yeah, but you just narrate stories on YouTube, you're nothing fucking special. None of us are. Do you know what I mean? It just, I don't know, it just winds me up. People, people always, they get like one follower and they think they're like, I don't know, like fucking Kim Kardashian or something, don't they? It's just annoying. Like, I would just rather talk to you lot. Whoa, the voice crack. <laughs> I'd rather talk to you lot, to be honest. And I enjoy the comments and stuff. And I try and reply to most of the comments. But sometimes I miss them because YouTube doesn't notify me. So if I ever don't reply to your comment, it's mainly because YouTube doesn't tell me that you've commented. Like, I have to specifically click on the video and scroll through everything to see the comment. Most of the time it just doesn't pop up, which is really annoying. But, yeah, I probably waffled on for ages, but, oh well, it's my video. We can waffle for as long as we bloody want, can't we? But, um, yeah, um... What else can I talk about at the minute? Quite enjoying just talking, to be honest. I don't know why. Like the thing is, that where I'm on my own all the time, majority of the time, it's like, I mean, I don't feel like I talk much. So when I do get to talk to you, like I just enjoy it. I just go on and on and on and on about nothing, pretty much. Oh, I want to get. I do need a new car, to be honest with you. But I just don't like spending money, like I said earlier. Like my car now, 
is a 2002 Ford Focus. It's really old, and I love it. But <laughs> there's nothing wrong with the engine of the car and that. But the electrics have all gone crap. So like the uh, <clears throat> what's it called? The air conditioning only works on the highest mode. And so I bought a part for it because I thought, oh yeah, that would be alright. I can just fix it myself, even though I know nothing about cars. I ended up buying the wrong part, so that wasn't very good. It was only like five, ten pounds anyway. So uh, yeah, the um, electric windows don't work. The um, one of the stereos has stopped working on it. The radio stopped working. So it's just it's all just starting to go apart in the electrics department of it. Really, like the actual car itself, touch wood, is fine. It's just the um, the electrics have gone to shit, really. But yeah, I do feel like I probably need to upgrade at some point. But I'm not going to get anything crazy. Like, I'll probably just spend like a couple of grand if I can do that. You know, like, nothing... I, I don't know why people spend, like, 15, 20 grand on a car. Not like I have 15, 20 grand to spend on it anyway. But even if I did, <clears throat> I wouldn't. Do you know what I mean? Like, it just doesn't seem... Like it's got four wheels and it goes from A to B. That's how I always see it. I'm not a car person, so what's the point of me spending money on a car? Do you know what I mean? Just get. I'll try and get something with low mileage, decently efficient, that's just reliable. I've been looking at um, Toyota. Apparently they're quite reliable, but I also like. I want it to look okay. Like it doesn't have to be anything special because my car now is nothing special. But like, I just want it to. You know, just be decent, like not really, really outdated, but at the same time, it doesn't have to be new. And like, I don't really care how many owners, whatever it's had, as long as it's not done like it's gone to like the fucking moon and back six times. I don't really care. Do you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, anything else I can talk about? Yeah, I mean, most of you are not listening at this point. I'm probably no one's here at this point. Probably unsubscribed, if I'm honest with you. Most people probably have. I don't really care, to be honest, though. If you unsubscribe, if you can, if you want, do you know what I mean? Just do what you want. But, um, oh, do you know what is nice? I got for my birthday, 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 birthday is very well. I don't know if I've told you this before. I can't really smell good, and um, I have to be really close to something to smell it, because people walk in and go, oh, can you smell that food? And I'm like, no, can't smell anything. Because like, imagine if there's like a carbon monoxide or whatever leak. I don't know if you can smell that. I'd be fucked. I wouldn't be able to smell anything. Or like a gas leak or something. It's probably just natural selection, isn't it, really? But, yeah. I, I've i got old Sauvage. That's what I was talking about. Someone got me Sauvage. It's really nice. I also like Versace Dylan Blue. I think that's a really good one as well. But, um, that's what I got for my birthday, like, recently. And, uh, I had something I was going to say then. That's annoying me. What was it? What was I going to say? It's gonna wind me up, so now I'm gonna finish this, and I'll remember it as soon as I, as soon as I finish, I, I will remember. I know I will. That's gonna bother me. Oh, I can't remember. I really just can't remember it. Um, what was it? No, it's gone. It's completely gone. It's really like problem at the minute right is it looks really warm outside so i'm looking outside and i can't wait to go outside now but i know as soon as i go out there it is going to be absolutely freezing like it's just cold but it looks hot it's so deceiving i don't know i probably should end this now um any final points um no not really all right thanks a lot for listening to this video if you've got to this point, if you got to this point, can you say, um, what can you say? So the brain's just gone now, isn't it? Say, get out of the house, you hermit. Yeah, say, get out of the house right now, you hermit. All right? All right, see you later. Bye.